Wiping his name off here. Oh. This cat is falling down. Could be a hammer tripping hazard. <laughs> or electric chalk hazard. Oh, no, Doc. <coughs> Doc, look up the lake. Yeah, I hit the big nails 99 out of 100 times. Hit the small nail once. Almost dropped the hammer. Six. We have enough yeah. without you, so yeah, it's probably better. It doesn't matter that, unless you watched all of the Thank first you. hearing. Because you were also loud and noisy. <laughs> <coughs> Welcome to the. Uh, Weathersfield, October 2nd, Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Would the clerk help me with the roll call, please? Uh, Chairman Harley. I'm here. Uh, clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Reichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. No. Mr. Homicki. No. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard. Here. Mr. Edwards. No. Ms. Antoniak. Here. Mr. Silver. No. All right. So there are seven of us here. Everybody's participating. Uh, first item on the agenda. 2.1 public hearing application 1992-18Z. John, <coughs> John R. Tays. Uh, Cedar Mountain Stone and Mulch. This is a continuation from last meeting. Would you join us at the microphone, introduce yourselves, and uh, I, don't know, I guess I'm wondering, <coughs> um, most of us, I think, heard the presentation last time, so I guess I'm thinking if you could just summarize quickly what it's all about and then maybe jump into the issues that uh, we left you with. Sure. All right. Sure. Uh, my name is John Artice, uh, General Manager for Cedar, Mauer, Cedar Mountain Stone and Mulch. With me is Chris Abidio, uh, Close Jensen and Miller. As Chairman mentioned, it's a continuation of a uh, meeting we had two weeks ago where we presented to you folks um, property improvements uh, and two new buildings that we're proposing for our property at 1943 Berlin Turnpike, obviously in, in Weathersfield. Um, since our last conversation and at some of the direction uh, of the council, we've uh, started a conversation with the state of Connecticut. I had a meeting with a Douglas Hunt from District 1. Uh, we walked the property uh, this week and uh, made them, you know, praise them of all our plans and ideas. Um, no major heartburn there. Obviously, they want approvals before they, um, you know, want the plans and so on and so forth. But we have started that conversation with them. In addition, we met with Peter and the town engineer um, last Friday. Uh, the town had uh, 11 or 12 items that they had called out to us. Um, and the town engineer had 24 some odd items. So we've worked uh, diligently through that and through those items. Um, there's really one that Chris will address a little later on that's still open, but we're kind of working towards a, towards a remedy there. Uh, I know we were going back and forth with the town engineer as late as yesterday morning, but I believe he took ill and hasn't been at work for the last day or two. So that's why that's, that's still open. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, um, I think I'll turn it at this point. I'll turn it over to Chris and let you, uh, let you go through some of the items, Chris. All right. Um, you're all pretty much familiar with the, with the site, and so I won't go into that too much. The one big major difference to the plans from the last time is at the request of staff, we had the phasing plan, 
We should see that as page eight in your packets. And we work with the owner of the property to develop what his goals are in what time frame. And so I'll go through them real quick. Uh, phase one is the demolition of the house at 1933 with the establishment of a customer and employee parking area where the storage building is going to go because when we go to construction, we won't be able to use the existing parking area. Uh, and erect the retaining wall by the south entrance. That's this one here. Uh, and that is a fall 2018, winter 2019 time frame. Phase two is the winter of 2019. The business gets very busy for a good nine or so months from uh, spring until fall. So we're starting up again with the fall with um, moving the uh, unused building and erecting the retail building. <coughs> uh, phase three is fall winter 2019. That's uh, constructing the storm drainage system. Construct the retaining walls along the Berlin Turnpike. That's these walls here. Remove the old office building. That's the shed over here. Um, and re relocate the stock bins. That's the heavy dark lines here as opposed to its old location. That's the lighter squares here. And then phase four, the winter of 2019, spring 2020. Remove the remaining two storage sheds. Uh, construct storage building, that's this north building. Demolish the house 1937. Construct the parking and drives and complete the plantings and landscaping. So that covers the uh, comments in regards to phasing, time, and the demolition aspect of it. Uh, with the relatively minor demolition, we didn't feel that demolition plan on its own was really uh, worth doing or we can put it on the phasing plan. Um, the next big item <coughs> I want to address has to do with the landscaping because there was a lot of questions about the landscaping in the night. <coughs> My landscape architect cannot be here tonight for personal reasons, so he's entrusted <laughs> the landscaping to me, and I hope that wasn't a mistake on his part. Uh, what we are proposing is a Well, tell him it was, even if it wasn't. Yeah, I know, regardless, make him feel bad. Somebody's going under the bus. I <laughs> uh, he's proposed a combination, uh, what he calls massings or groupings, of a combination of a large shrub of viburnum and a small tree called an, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, amelanchier, I believe it's pronounced. Um, the locations of the combination of the Amelang years is intended to give you some screens along the areas of the building that the owner can, let's say, live with being screened. For instance, this combination of plantings down here should screen the back of the retail building so that the rear overhead door is not readily visible from the road. The Viburnums will be planted along the area of the um, storm drainage outlet. And from what I understand, these are not what he calls popsicle stick trees. They're uh, multi stem trees that go out that are wedge shaped, uh, reach their heights of the tree grows to between 12 and 15 feet, <coughs> and the shrub grows to a height of 8 to 12 feet. And they'll provide that visual interest that the commission was interested in seeing. I understand they have white flowers that come into effect in the early spring on the Amelanc here and later spring for the Burnham. Uh, and then they turn colors like most deciduous trees will in the fall. Um, with, he noted the white Burnham is a nice red and purple color in the fall uh, to, again, give you a seasonal interest in the landscape. I think that's the best I'm going to be able to do on the landscape aspect of it. And then the other big thing you found in your packets that you didn't have last time was the, uh, the different product information that Mr. Gillespie asked for to give you a better idea of what the retaining walls are going to look like. And this is the Atlas Block retaining wall uh, brochure. And these are cross-sectional details that the manufacturer provided <coughs> as a uh, general reference. 
And again, the pictures that I had last time of completed walls over at Central Connecticut State University. I don't know where on campus these actually are, so don't pin me down on that, but that's where I was told they're over at CCSU. Um, and the other item I, had to, uh, I wanted to look at here with this picture is, although this isn't our actual fence in front of the building, this is a representative example of what the fence along this will look like. I'm sorry for the animals. Yeah, can you, can you rotate it? <clears throat> oh, okay, the white fence. Oh, yes. You're talking That's about the white fence. And mm -hmm. the difference is that currently it runs between, on the south end, from the driver running south until it reaches the chain link fence, which is going to go away. Mm -hmm. And on the north end, there's a small section of it up near the neighboring property. So when we're done with all of this, that will go from all along, all along the Russell Roadside except for the entrances. Yes, yeah, a uh, couple things. What item eight? I on, uh, eight is yeah, item about the wait a minute. No, hold on. Okay. Uh, item nine: additional wall signage proposed will require approval of the design review now. What, what wall sign? That is referring to the signs <coughs> on the actual building. On the uh, building plans that we provided you, there's spaces on the wall where signs can go. I guess this is sort of a, um, a preliminary building plan. You know, so <coughs> when the guy put it together, he didn't know where the sign was going to go. Uh, and design review made the comment that when you finally decide how big and where those signs will be, they want to know about it. So that's that comment. Did they have a concern with how many? No. They had a concern with how big and where it would look like. Okay. Now I know this is different. So when I say it, don't take it the same way. But City Fish, we had some significant discussions with them about signage on their buildings and they took a lot of it off in order to put up that electronic sign out front. Okay. Uh, and I'm just wondering why you have so much in the way of, I know you gotta advertise the place, but you're already keeping the freestanding sign mm -hmm. and moving it back right onto your property. Correct. So that's good. Then you need this also? Uh, I'll let John answer that because that's kind of- I'm sorry to get into something that's not, in your area. Yeah, the owner's, um, he's not uh, big on the signage. He's going to, we'll, we'll probably have minimal signage. And it may be on the um, on the Berlin Turnpike sign. But, uh, you know, we're well established. The, the, the sign out front tells you who we are. Our operation tells you who we are. So it's not critical for us for the signage. You know, we want to reserve the right to, to comply with zoning and can comply with the signage square footage. Um, I believe... The big one up front is 42 square feet of signage, and we're, we, we're allowed up to 80, I believe. But and, um, and we have what? A total of 80, is, I believe, is what's, a, what's, a, what's allowed. The one out front is 42. 42. Yeah. So we'd be limited in what so we you could can do. Add more between 42 and. Correct. And yeah, the the 38 and more so square feet of signage. Of and how but much it, of those the signs account for? Any idea? Uh, in terms of square footage, or, yeah. or it would be a total of 38 square feet we had left remaining to use. And that's um, what you're thinking of. Um, as we looked at it and kicked it around, no, we're not thinking quite that much. Oh, we're not nice. thinking quite that much. We want it to be subtle and uh, and and you know uh, look look good. Yeah. You know. It is constrained by by the reg, so right, <clears throat> right. Design review will take care of that. Right. Right. Okay. Fine. Um, Somebody mentioned item eight. I think George start, touched on item eight. Of uh, the commentator's comments, item eight has to do with stormwater management. Um, unfortunately, in the two weeks we've had since we met last, addressing all of the technical changes as we went back and forth with uh, Derek about that isn't the sort of thing where I could get that to a published state in that short time frame. Requires changing areas and runoff numbers and things of that nature. But uh, as we, and in fact, as of as late as yesterday afternoon, we're still in discussion about like that. So uh, we will work that out. Uh, we just, and once we do come to a final agreement on the nature of these <coughs> details, we'll republish that report. 
We did add uh, permeable parking areas. We changed the parking areas from asphalt to permeable pavers. Yeah, to allow for a water infiltration and storage. So we changed that up as well as one of the sidewalks next to the building to increase, you know, to decrease the amount of runoff. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> Commission, I'll direct your attention to the fact that uh, CJM did respond to all the comments on September 27th, which was probably just before they were sending this out. So I'm going to ask Peter to kind of summarize what he thinks his own comments are because there's nothing else. There's no uh, response from staff, either the engineering office or planning. But before I go there, <clears throat> um, just to kind of summarize what the meeting minutes said and my recollection of the meeting, it was we were looking for the phased approach, which we heard, uh, talking to DOT staff specifically about the um, drainage and access, which I didn't hear about just yet, landscaping, um, and then I didn't note any changes in the waivers for landscaping that may or may not be necessary on the basis of what you added. We haven't modified the waiver request. Uh, one of the big things on the waiver request that we should modify is the area that is void now because we've got the variance for the screening along the, uh, the whole along the ramp. <coughs> Screening. So that aspect of the landscape waiver really isn't necessary any longer. As far as the rest of the areas, we haven't reviewed uh, too deeply where that was going to go. Where those numbers were changing? That's okay. The big one, though, is, is the request about the growing turnpike side because we do have the zoning uh, variance. All right. We did add a combination of 70, right? Uh, which is the viburnum and the, the viburnum and the amyline right. here along that in front of the wall along that exit ramp to soften. I mean, the wall takes the place of of that, or for the variance it does. Yes, but we did add again the 70. You know, for your quote, we did add 70 plants to soften that look of the wall, so it's not just not just. And I know Mr. Silva felt strongly about. That he area did. up there. He did, yes. And Thank Kevin you. did the best he could with what he had to work with. Yeah. One of the things Kevin wanted me to point out to you, uh, since you brought it to my attention, that I neglected that. Where did that go? Behind that. All right. He thought that you might think that we were neglecting this area here, and so he wanted me to point out to you that this is an MDC unit. This triangular piece of land between this dash line and the dark, heavy property line. There's a sanitary sewer that runs through here. Uh, our discussions with the MDC says you can disturb up to a foot into it vertically, and what can you do with a foot? <coughs> um, so we kept all the landscaping behind the, uh, the easement. So it does kind of look like we neglected that. <coughs> it's just that we don't have permission to do that. I planted in mine. Hey, pardon? <laughs> <laughs> I planted in mine. <laughs> they'll, they'll cut it down if they ever need to get in there. Yeah, I do realize we did probably get away with it. No, but I know, I know that that particular stretch is you're probably looking at the back of the building for some of your signage, et cetera. So I'm with you. I, I will note for the commission that that wall that's protecting the, uh, the bins does get to be 10 feet tall. So that's what he's trying to screen, and I'm sure that's what Dan was um, expressing his you know. I don't think the wall height exceeds six feet, to be honest with you. Um, I'm looking at the prof at the uh, the contour map. Top of wall, 250, and... 250, yeah, that's all right. And... Uh, <coughs> What's my invert over So I guess your invert's 41. So I guess not the, the whole wall is not... Seems to me I had it somewhere else. But anyways, it may not be 10 feet, but it may be, you know... I hope it's not 10 feet. Eight feet, eight feet showing in some places. But that's where he's got the tree. So I'm... I'm and it does... It does funnel down too, right? right. Make room for the scour hole. Right. Yep. Are you also so, put? Oh, I'm, I'm oh, good. Thank you. Are you also putting um, ornamental fencing as well? That white fence on the Russell Road side—that's the I white. Consider that to be ornamental. That's, oh, okay. But there's also a, a wrought iron. I, I say that with quotations because it's probably not going to be actual wrought iron uh, fencing along top of the retaining wall. Uh, both as fall protection and as a more attractive option to chain link. The chain link that's out there now will be gone. Yeah. We're not using any new chain link. Uh, 
Uh, so you've got the wrought iron along the top of the wall. You've got the uh, timber rail fence along the Russell Road side. Um, the only other fencing is the um, dumpster screen. Because I thought you were proposing, yeah, so the fencing that you're proposing, the, the black fencing, is that what it is? Mm -hmm. right. That's going along the retaining wall, like sitting on top of the retaining wall, all along the Berlin Turnpike? Uh, yes, okay. because of its because it's metal, yep. the structural parts of it are fairly narrow, so you have a lot more light showing through it than you have. Yeah. Um, it's not a visual barrier, I guess is the yeah. way to try and say that. Um, in fact, uh, most people won't even notice it, uh, but it will keep you from walking off the wall. It seems like it'd be a nice detail as well. It is a nice it's detail. almost like a screening in a yeah. way. But being black, it's not. A, you know, if it were white, you'd see it. Yes. But it's, it blinds it's more subtle, yeah. 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 Uh, probably be aluminum, to be honest with you, as opposed to wrought iron, but we call it wrought iron to give you an idea of what it would look like. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's a description in the prints, right? In the, uh, yes, it's there on the was, There page. was a description. I, that's why I just wanted to confirm that that's how it would look sure. and, and where it's located. Yep. All right, so unless there's a. Oh, go ahead, Tom. Sooner or later, I want to get to Peter and have him characterize your responses. <laughs> Okay. Well, and to some extent, I apologize for bringing these issues up at this sort of late stage, but I just want to clarify matters. Uh, you, you're demolishing two houses, um, one of which you already have the demolition permit, so it's, it's probably too late to bring this up. Uh, but for either, for both houses, may I ask, um, have you looked into uh, whether or not there's any historic value to them when, and when they were constructed? Uh, I can tell you approximately construction was in the early part of the 1900s if the assessor's records are accurate. Approximate year built on the property card, if I remember, it was 19 teens for the one that's already down and uh, 19, late 19 teens or 1920s for the one that John uses for his office. Okay, have you, vet, have you done any investigation as to the, you know, the, any historic uh, you know, value of them? We have, not, no. we, have, no. we have not, no. We have not. All right. Uh, secondly, uh, you've, this relates to the, uh, the propane storage tank and the thing. Um, you've indicated in your materials that uh, this will uh, comply with all applicable uh, federal and state uh, environmental and uh, safety uh, regulations. Um, if that, is, would you accede to having that as as, you know, as one of the p potential conditions that the commission might uh, attach that you will comply with such things? Yes. Since you've already yes. yeah. indicated that yeah. in materials. Yeah. Thank Not you. a problem. Peter. Could you characterize uh, the responses and where you, you know, staff sits with all of those? Sure. Besides eight, as we heard. I think in in summary, there are four four matters that uh, may be worthy of conditions. Um, the first being the fact that the town engineer uh, has been uh, out of the office for the last couple of days. I believe uh, the vast majority of his comments have been addressed. However. There's still um, a discrepancy on the drainage calculations in terms of impervious coverage and those kinds of things. So I would suggest that um, there be a condition that the final um, uh, plans and uh, associated drainage uh, study uh, be reviewed and approved by the town engineer to his satisfaction. There's another layer of permitting here from the DOT in terms of the drainage. Uh, so w we should be covered, but nevertheless, I think as of uh, today, I can't say that he is um, completely satisfied with the with the f final situation there. So that's the first um, first matter. Uh, the second was discussed. There are a series of landscape waivers. Uh, I think there are five. We should include uh, uh, you should include all five just to be safe for the record. So that's the second. Uh, at the last meeting and per our conversations with um, the applicant, um, I think I think they have agreed to make the curb cut. On the Berlin Turnpike, I, I'm trying to remember if it's a one way in or a one way out. So oh. th this was oh. a discussion at your last meeting about that curb cut. They'd like to maintain it, and they'd like to uh, have it 
um, as a as an exit only, not an entrance. And then lastly, we were talking about the screening. Um, I think the existing deciduous trees that you see on the very right bottom side of the of the landscape plan should should buffer that parking area. There's a that's where the fueling um, above ground fueling facility is, and there's some storage over there. But I would prefer that there be a condition that you know once the um, <clears throat> field conditions are determined that we have the ability to add uh, some additional screening uh, to um, better screen, you know, where that fueling area is going to be. So those were the four issues that I think um, were at least outstanding from, from my perspective. George, you had a question? Yeah, are you um, happy with the uh, list, uh, the type? spec of equipment that they're going to be parking and I saw it but are you happy with that? Uh, well I don't know that I, that was you know particularly described so maybe it's a good time to get that on the record in terms of what's being stored in the various outdoor display areas um, there are some there there is equipment out there now I'm assuming they're simply going to move uh, some of that into some of these display areas but it's you make a good point that the record should probably reflect and clarify what's going in these various outdoor so display areas or it should be at least explained to you whether you want to attach it as a condition I think uh, okay. that's up to you but it's certainly something that should be on the record um, you still uh, interested in allowing the uh, Berlin Turnpike exit I guess it is right uh, we, we were part of a conversation at the staff level but maybe they should explain to you uh, the need for that? Um, well, I'd like them to because I'm thinking I might vote against this application and I don't want to do that if that remains as a requirement. Are oh, they going to keep it? Uh, I don't know how the staff had. So I was going to ask you, when Chairman, you when you had the DOT out there, did they? They, did they, they felt initial? the same way as the council did that as well. Uh, as, as, the as our conversations went with the engineer and, and Peter, that exit only would be fine. We explained to them that it's it, it's, re it's only used for exit only. It's you you would literally have to make a U turn to enter it uh, yeah, as you're traveling right. southbound. Snake it, road. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's 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 an exit point for us, uh, and we and we'd like for to all keep of it. Your equipment? No, no, not for the equipment. It's for when um, when our when our people and our staff are leaving. We park up in that area. And that's an easy, easy access point to the Berlin Turnpike. To for get us. onto the Berlin Turnpike. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, they just yeah. don't like going out Russell Road to the ramp, huh? Well, there's quite a bit of congestion right. there, and not everybody's going. Not, nobody's happy with that. Right. <laughs> nobody's going the Newington Way. A lot of folks are heading south on the Berlin Turnpike. The majority of our staff is. So, so that's what it's DOT that's what it's there for. People getting onto that ramp. Well, I don't. Crossing over the solid line. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I don't know if. Um, They'd be too happy with people slowing down to turn in right. in the traffic situation. That's that, probably yeah. the worst. I, when I was thinking about which way would I prefer it, it's probably out. At least they're only backing up in the driveway. Um, I've been there, you know, three years, and I have yet to see any 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 vehicle or anybody enter that way. Yeah. You know, enter exit, yes, but but not enter. So the only other thing that I would be concerned about is if it's used <clears throat> as as we consider possibly putting in a condition in this thing that it not be used for the for the public either that it's a you know that it's a resource only for the workers yeah right so yeah. the public flow on the off chance that somebody gets lost up there which which, which has happened once or twice over the last couple of years it's really just for our employees only the public doesn't even access to that to that to that area yeah. you know and so we do have the light at arrow gonna, road except that at some point or other you're going to use this as temporary parking over on yeah. that side and so yeah. i envisioned this cut through um, you know, in, in the first stage, and so I'd like you to control that, and, and in a permanent condition, I'd like that controlled as well, personally. Sure. All right. So, All right. DOT then you think is happy with the DOT with can't this exiting? Huh? So DOT really can't say you uh, you can't have access. To deny access uh, would be to. They don't with the traffic jams <coughs> over there and they have rampage. So it's, it's a it's a parcel of land that has access to the highway. And so and I'm, not, I'm a non engineer and a non traffic engineer, but Mr. So Chairman. The, the hist no, the history are they got two homes there, right? And they had access 
and they are parcels, legal parcels. There's and cut no, going up and you'd have to pay for them. You'd have to pay for them. There's an access up to the tow lot just north of them, a yeah. couple hundred feet. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's yeah, it's but not that's a house and that's owned by Mirabelli and I it's believe. a tow yard. It's a commercial towing yard. Yeah, commercial towing. Okay, He's okay, running heavy a, trucks and equipment yeah, in and out of there, trailers, everything, heavy yeah. tow trucks. So. Yeah, and he's going both ways. I, so I, I was listening to your point. So I don't, I'm not, I don't get really too worked up about that. Exit only makes common sense to me. Right? Yeah, I mean, and I'd hate to make a condition here that DOT couldn't live with because then they'd have to come back and get it removed. Right. Exactly. Uh, uh, so did I understand you correctly? You'd be okay if we had an exit only type of constraint and no internal. Yeah. No allowing yeah, people. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, can I open it up to the public to ask some questions? Is there anybody here who wants to speak on this? It is a public hearing. Okay. Any other, other questions? I just have one question. The scour hole that's at the outlet, uh, it looks like it could be the only piece of construction that's permanent that's outside of the right-of-way, or it could be. It's on their property. It's not in the DOT right-of-way. But it's, I mean, you're talking nine feet and the grading that's going to be required to make it a trapezoidal bottom could end up extending outside of the right of way. Oh, it should not. Should it, not. It, it's close, but it should not. I would say if it was flat, sure, but it's a constant downslope down to the, um, down to the swale there. So it I is, just, but that's why the invert of the pipe is as low as it is, so <clears> that it's coming out two or, so, or two or three feet into the hillside. Okay. And so your trapezoidal. Uh, so the nine foot scour hole fits within, plus the grating on the other side of it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Not by much. I know, it's tight. That's why I was looking at it. Okay. One of the reasons it's a little wider than it needs to be is to make up extra. It was uh, sized for that. Extra eddy room. Okay. George? Yeah, is the Peter uh, lighting on this site uh, adequate and all that sort of thing? Um, there is a limited public access area n next to the you know, proposed building. Um, I believe there's some lighting on the building. So given the small size of that parking area, I think it should be and sufficient. We only, and basically only operate during daylight hours. Right. You know, it's not, we're not open in, in the dark. So, so two additional topics on my list. Would you... Um, Talk about the equipment that you gave us, so it's on the record. Uh, where, what is it, and where you're planning on storing it on a nightly basis? And I know it's not in that building. That, and I'll. And the second one is, um, one more time for the record, what's going to be stored in each of the outdoor areas? In other words, in this bin area that has the drain system in it, under the hoops, and then over in that area that's got a si got a retaining wall around it. Each one of those, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. So here is good as it's we're basically moving our aggregate bins uh, north, uh, roughly about 30 feet. So this will be. Yeah, I was going to say, Chris, could you just yeah, yeah tilt it a little? There you so go. Thank you. Yeah, I'm uh, good. Thank you. Will be much like we have now, aggregate bins all the way around this area, as well as facing the Berlin Turnpike aggregate bins here. So that's going to remain the same. Okay. Uh, there's really no major change to it on this side. And John, the aggregate bins, if you could translate what that. What those yeah, materials stone, are? Three quarter inch, uh, you know, process. Uh, three quarter inch clean stone, stone dust, uh, different uh, Connecticut blend, different sizes, different different uh, different stones, <coughs> and stones that folks use to uh, fill their flower beds, things of that nature. And and how how high would you expect those piles to be? Um, we we know the top of the wall is going to be two fifty ish, and and the inside is. The bottom on the inside is 245. Yeah, they're, they're boxed now with Jersey barriers. They typically don't exceed three or four feet. They're, they're about 20 feet, 22 feet deep, maybe okay. eight feet wide, eight to 10 feet wide. So we don't, we don't. Uh, <coughs> really can't get much higher than eight correct. to 10 feet, right? Correct. And, yep. we don't, and we don't need to get, we don't need to get that high. We don't need to, to, to store that much. You know? Okay. Um, on this side, uh, we we're gonna we're gonna 
We're going to move our topsoil to, to, to be in this area here, but this is primarily, or it's all mulches, all different mulches that we have here. And then in the winter time, uh, when we have hoop houses, the, uh, we bring in sand and salt, bulk sand and salt to sell. So what we keep there in the future is basically what, what we're going to, you know, what we have there now. That's, that's not changing at all. Okay. And in the, in the little area that's encompassed by a short four-foot wall across from the, the structure. Yep. Nope, uh, straight up from the house. Uh, right, left, left. Your finger, take your finger and move left. The other left. <laughs> so so go, to the, go to the new structure. Where's the new house? There you go. Go, go right north. Go right up, 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 right there. Oh, uh, this will be um, like we have it now. Uh, I'm sorry, like that. Uh, pallets. Just, uh, pallets of product. Pallets like of pavers. product. Okay. This so you, is so where we uh, we have a lot of uh, cash and carry items as well that we sell off of the pallet. All right. This is open pallet stock. Is really and the other stuff farther along that row is <laughs> all palleted much stuff. Much like we have it now, full pallets of material. Okay. Stock that builds here and that we sell, that we load them and we sell as full pallets. Gotcha. So smaller purchases, larger per Correct. supply stuff. Yeah, this is kind of. Um, Cash and carry, and then this, this is uh, truck loads that go out. Gotcha. All right, and sh you want to, on that topic, or should we go I, to the equipment? I think it's that topic. Hold okay. on. Uh, I wanted to talk about the hoop houses, but no. Okay, stay to, the, stay to the hoop houses. Which is right there. Go ahead. Hoop houses? Yeah. What about them? Oh. There's three of them. We're, we're supposed to discuss whether they're temporary or permanent, according to He did just say, you know, I thought they were permanent. He did just imply that they were coming down during the summer. No, no, we, no, we want that permanent. We, we, we use them year-round. We want that coverage. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, on three of them. During the winter, then you yeah. put your salt and sand in. Yeah, last time it was three. We need that dryer, especially like uh, product like topsoil, you know, with the weather we're having. If we're going to sell it the day after rain, we've got to have it covered. Or else mm -hmm. it just gets saturated and we can't, we can't sell it. We can't load it. No, we can't spread it. Right. This so, may have been discussed earlier in my absence. I apologize for being late. Uh, and I don't recall last week, there's a reason for the oversized from sheds, whatever you call them. Who house? Who house? Dump truck, right? Right. What was the reason for seeking the oversized? Well, we were discussing the heights as they were, uh, as they related to uh, the Russell Road side. You know, they're, uh, what do we say? They were Russell Road side is 16 feet, 16 feet tall. But, but they're on, on top of a 10 foot wall. From the Berlin Turnpike side, in order to be able to dump the, the triaxle to raise the bed all the way up, that's why they're, they're, they're taller than on that side. Does that, that answer your question? Or? Yeah, I just want to know the reason why you were seeking, you know, the an oversized. It's in order to, to be allowed to, to, open, to dump that triaxle, to get the triaxle body all the way up in the air. As it is now, we clear it by about a foot. And the this size is going to be the same as what's there now? Yes, sir. Okay. And this is the best on-site location. They're there <laughs> now. That's number one, right? Correct. And you're adding one. Correct. And we, you we didn't want to locate it anywhere else. Covering the, covering the topsoil. It's a function at the end of our day, covering and uncovering that. It's just, uh, you know. Yeah, it's, no, it's you don't want to do that. Labor intensive. Is it going to rain today? Is it not going to rain today? So we thought it was the right opportunity, the right time. to get the permission for all of them, especially how about the equipment? You gave us a list. Um, is that the same that exists out there today? Is that more than? Where do you store them at the end of the day? Well, right now we're parking, we're storing them here. The plan is to store them in, in, the, new, in the new parking area. Um, the, the equipment swells, uh, you know, in the springtime. And then it decreases, obviously, in the fall and into, in the winter. There's really hardly anything there but a loader and a, and a bobcat. So it, it does change. We do keep three forklifts on the property, the low pallets. They're, they're pretty, you know, constant. But, um, you know, it depends on the, uh, uh, what we're doing at the time and what projects we're working on. Um, tri there's no triaxles here. They're, they're stored at another location. They just come in for material. Um, that's, you know, that's a moving list, uh, really, of what, what I supply to you. But that's, I would say, what's there. 75 percent 80 percent of the time okay so so the bobcats the forklifts loaders all that stuff is probably in the middle of your site and you leave it there maybe right. you park right it but it's the big stuff that you move to the other side putting in this, in this area. Yeah, the 
plan is to once we're fully operational. And and the list just to publicize is five dump trucks, a flatbed, and a tractor with a trailer. We we, uh, we park the tractor, the, uh, the flatbed, and the tractor trailer here linearly along the street. Okay. What else? I want to suggest a condition on that exit on the Berlin Turnpike that we look at it in a couple of years or some something along that line, and then I'll uh, suggest the. Let Peter think about how they might work. Might come up with something along that line. Okay. One last one last call for anybody in the public. I'm voting against it. I don't want to do that. You, suggestion regarding the, the exit. Sure. You, you would you introduce yourself yeah. for the record? Sure. On the Rocky Hill. Uh, you know. I, I'm you, not with them. I'm just. Uh, no, I know. No, no, no. That's fine. Did you capture me? Come out this way. They could go uh, on the street and come out and uh, come with a farm on the Berlin Turnpike. That's another exit. That's that's true. That's why we don't want to. They're legally allowed to have one. Well, just that idea. Yeah. Well, well, wait a minute, Mr. Chairman. You can't go out to the ramp from on Russell Road and go out to the turnpike. Yeah, you can go left there. There's no signs on it. Say that again. Coming out of Russell Road, you go over to the ramp and then which curves up to go south. Yep. On which is the way you're going out with this exit at the house. Yes. Yeah, I know it's not easy, but, you know, you can do it. So, uh, yeah, I, and I, it might even be safer than going out in that no, backup that you often get on the ramp there. They've made it easier, likely. Well, let's keep in mind there's a light and arrow road that stops the traffic, and then there's, a, you know, the, the flow of traffic stops, and that's when we exit there. It's not like we're exiting out into flowing traffic. There is the light couple hundred yards up the street and that allows us to get out of there without right. a problem you know we do feel that that's a valuable curve cut and and you know the owner feels strongly about closing that I don't know that anybody would voluntarily close that 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 that, that curb cut and it exists up the street it exists a couple hundred feet up right about 160 feet of that driveway is just your north border just about right yeah. you mean Mirabelli's yes. driveway yeah, yeah. Mirabelli's driveway is uh, where a butts of property. This, yeah. I know you can't see it, but this little dot here yeah. is the catch basin. Yeah. And Dolly's driveway touches that catch basin. He's right here. Yeah, so it's, I mean, just off your scale, it's probably about 160 feet from the northern curve of that uh, cup. Yeah, yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I think that I think the person was making the comment, and I apologize, I didn't catch your name, but was just suggesting there was a mechanism by which to go somewhere else if we wanted to close it. That's what I got, right? But okay. legally, as two parcels, they have a legal right to access to the Berlin Turnpike. The DOT is not going to shut it because that's effectively an acquisition of of a right, and they'd have to pay the owners for that. So I don't see us dr closing the driveways. I think our best shot is to limit. However, Mr. How you Chair, drive out. we can as a commission. You no, no, you no, you probably can't, George. No, you probably can't. I would think that it would create a burden to the taxpayer. I would believe it would create a burden to the taxpayer, as a former person from DOT said. If we start putting conditions on that access point right there, this could create a real problem or a lot of expense for him at DOT. I mean, I would think it would be really a shame and embarrassment to us if they go to DOT in their next steps and then he's got to bounce them back because of a condition we made. I mean, it's going to be pretty, if it becomes too dangerous, obviously, or not effective, the, the employees aren't going to exit it. But to have the guy go back at a later point in time and try to reestablish this would be a project. Rich, is that an eminent domain type yeah. issue? Yeah, they really? have a legal, they have a legal right kidding. to that. And oh. to yeah, it's a taking. I mean, and and story. you know, not to not to pile on. I mean, no, no, you know, no, there may no. be some sure. point in you know the next hundred years where this is used for something other than stone and mulch, and there could be either emergency reasons or commercial value in having that you know that exit for another use on this property too. And also to pile on. It's, um, <laughs> the day the DOT does decide to revamp this exit for the umpteenth time, they're going to be in a real pickle if they already don't have this curb cut. And to Rich's point, it, 
from a, if if Homiki was here, he'd tell you from a assessor standpoint, it enhances <laughs> yeah, the value of the property. So yeah. let's put our thinking caps on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and we'll all be driving electric cars, and, you know, <laughs> electric plus, scooters. Yeah, right. All right. I want to see an electric get my mulch. Yeah. So this is a public hearing. Um, I didn't see any hands to offer any comments. Is are there any more questions, or can we move on the hearing? I guess. Oh, excuse me. My only question would be, you heard some of the proposed conditions. Did you have issues with any of them? No. Okay. No. You know, uh, if I may, uh, it's been a process for us. Uh, like I mentioned, we were here roughly 18 months ago, inadequately prepared, but we've taken the time and effort to do that, employed a, a you know, a, a very capable engineer, who's uh, been through a lot of expenses, uh, I've met with ZBA, I've met with the uh, design board, uh, I've met with you folks, you know, trying to put our best foot forward. You know, we're going to create roughly 19,000 square feet of, uh, of, of buildings here. Uh, we're, you know, we're trying to grow our business. We're trying to do it the correct way. Uh, some conditions and your concerns, I understand, but a curb cut and things of that nature, I, I, I think are, you know, somewhat of an overreach, but we've talked it through. Well, you know, we, we're passionate about the project. We want to complete it. We want to do the right thing. And, and we hope that, uh, you folks will see, see it our way. I know you don't want to reveal all this kind of stuff, but what's the value going to go up when you're done? Uh, I think? I don't know that th this is the forum for, for financial questions. Yeah, I'm not going to say it. Yeah. 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 It might be a different answer to the Board of Tax with the year. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't think it's going to make him the number one taxpayer to Weather Shield, but it's no. not going to hurt. But it will be large. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sure Merrill Lee will be out there as soon as he gets a CEO. <laughs> Well, it, except doesn't identify them all, right? All right. So, did somebody make a motion for my hearing? I'll I'll, I'll move to close the hearing. Okay. Second. Thank you, Dan. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. <clears throat> so, would anybody like to try and format a uh, a motion? Make a motion. We approve application 1992-18Z uh, as submitted. Uh, with the following conditions. One, that uh, final plans and uh, the drainage study are approved by town staff. Um, second, that we grant the five requested landscape waivers. Uh, third, that the uh, entrance onto the Berlin Turnpike on the east side of the property be exit only and that it be limited to employees of the business um, fourth that the staff reserves the right to request additional screening uh, after reviewing the field conditions uh, in the fueling area oh you grabbed mine I'm sitting there uh, yeah. looking for that piece of paper for quite a while. <laughs> well you wrote it all down so I can't remember was there another one that um, the fourth one being the screening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got that. Right. Um, you added the driveway. So I think that's it. Right. The four, four topics. Mm -hmm. So the only thing what I was looking for while you were stealing my paper was whether we wanted to talk specifically about the five waivers and what they are. So it was the first was the 25% overall landscaping requirement. Uh, the second one was the 15% internal um, landscape requirement for the site. Um, the remaining three had to do with the uh, two of them two of the remaining three had to do with the um, landscape island requirements that you have in your regulations and the fifth one apparently was in last week's paperwork that's what yeah, I think I, is on the I've floor the, behind me yeah I've got the minutes right here <clears throat> let me check what the fifth one was <clears throat> I got it. Fifth was the um, screening of the loading areas, outdoor storage, uh, and work areas, um, and um, so that was the that was the fifth one. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't think the motion had a second as yet. Okay. I'll I'll do that if that's acceptable. Go ahead, Tom. And I, I thought you were going to follow it up with some caveats. Oh, or, I do. Or, I, I do have a, a, a question and and and. Um, uh, a small amendment 
for technical purposes. One being the does the uh, the motion which which contains the verbiage uh, accepting the uh, application as, as submitted or the plans as submitted uh, include the uh, uh, the statements of the um, close Jensen and Miller uh, communication uh, of September 27, 2018. Yeah, and I mean, that, I intended to include everything that was submitted as well as everything that was said. Okay, uh, that's that's that was my hope. Uh, secondly, um, could we also include, and I would move to include uh, within uh, the. Uh, the scope of the motion, uh, an, additional com uh, an additional condition that the uh, f uh, the gas storage uh, 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 equipment uh, d uh, will conform or shall conform to all applicable uh, federal and state uh, environmental and safety regulations, as uh, you know, especially since that's the the applicant has uh, specifically agreed to to that uh, provision or that uh, that condition. Sure, I'd definitely accept that. Okay, I'd so move then. All right. So we have a, a motion and a second with five five topics, right? Any additional comments or questions? Uh, could we? I does my I think my my motion requires a vote to amend the. Uh, uh, oh, I was just accepting. It was that accepting that in, within the scope of your motion. Yeah. No, I was accept. I'll accept that as a fifth condition. Okay, I think that that requires a vote then of the commission. We'll, we'll vote on the whole thing. If, if you're all set, we have a motion and a second now. Well, if you want to, if you want to vote on the amendment to the motion to add the fifth condition. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that that's required by parliamentary procedure. Oh. No. Okay, there's, there's I'll, I'll accept the. Well, we uh, I'll accept the uh, chair's. Well, we can do it either way. Uh, sure. The chair's George. interpretation then. George, uh, Dan, are you happy, Dan? You came in late. With I remember at the last, uh, last hearing, you uh, were concerned about that corner that we were talking about where yeah. the exit is. And are you happy with the, the shrouding and the, the wall and so forth? I know you were concerned. Did, did no, you? I, I think it's better. Um, it's certainly not perfect. Um, it's the nature of the operation. I'm not trying to do anything, not to allow them to do business. And I understand where they're coming from. It's just was was my pet peeve was that this was the Berlin Turnpike, and we were trying to do something to uh, upscale the, you know this area with development. And I wanted to bring this up as far as possible without interfering with their business. And you think they may have done that? They, they did add, I wasn't you missed that part of the presence. whole discussion, but uh, talking to my compadre next to me, he, he was satisfied with it, so I'll go along with it. <laughs> compadre, okay. All right. So we have a motion that has a positive motion and it has five conditions on it, um, up to from the four original. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Alrighty. Go do it, and uh, thank you again for coming in with a comprehensive plan. And all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Second item on the agenda, 2.2, .2, a public hearing again. Application number 1993-18-Z, Webb Dean Stevens Museum, seeking a special permit to construct a building addition. And it, this, too, is a continuation of a hearing from the last meeting. So like the last applicant, if you would just kind of summarize, most of us heard it, and then tell us what additional things you've added. If okay. that makes sense, the comments Thank you. that we have offered. I'm Mike McDonald. I'm with the Downs Construction Company. I'm the owner's representative and we're the construction manager. Tom Elmore is with us. He's our landscape architect from Elmore Collaborative. We had a uh, number of staff review comments to uh, digest and uh, four points on our agenda tonight. We had a meeting with staff a week ago today. 
on the 25th of September. Uh, we reached a number of compromises on a range of comments they had. And I believe uh, Tom will review those individually with you in a second. Uh, uh, Tom and Chuck, our civil engineer, have adjusted all the documents uh, commensurate with the agreement through the meeting. Um, and I'll speak to the civil engineering briefly at the end. Uh, uh, second point, the uh, museum executive director, Charles Lyle, has crafted a memo which will lead to a parking policy. But I want to read uh, some excerpts from his memo about parking and management of traffic on the site and to address one of the uh, public comments about operations, uh, numbers of functions, and so forth. Um, and then um, just lastly, I'll, I'll summarize where we are with the civil um, engineering, which was not submitted in time. The comments, uh, revised drawings were reached me yesterday, so I, I ran some copies into Peter, but uh, they're probably not in your packet unless they made it in la uh, lately. So um, Dick Agney's also here from the museum. He's the facilities director, um, so he can correct me if I misstate any of the policies. But on September 26, Charles uh, Lyle, the executive director, sent out a memo, uh, and he's going to recap two points, the operations point and the parking point. If I can continue? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the barn, which you're familiar with, is a site of between 60 and 70 weddings a year, mostly on weekends. Those run from April to November. The average attendance at the weddings is 100 to 120 people, and maybe two of those weddings exceed that number. Uh, many of the larger parties shuttle in their attendees, so parking has not been an issue in the years. Uh, the barn is closed for the winter, which is mid-November to mid-April. Um, and I've been part of that experience this last year as we did the project. The staff works out of the web house. The, everything else is shut down. Um, they do plow the driveway loop in case there's a fire response or other emergency need to get to the back of the property. Um, when they have the larger parties, they do staff the site and direct traffic and so forth. So again, there's not been any uh, incidents or accidents, et cetera, in, in that operation. Um, rarely do they have two events at any one time. Uh, the events in the, uh, in the barn are well described, the weddings. Uh, inside the historic homes, they have meetings, lectures, and so forth. So the new facility is intended to supplement the historic educational value of the site not to hold other weddings, other anniversary parties, et cetera. It's not a lease facility. I think we stated that before. So in the winter months, the barn is closed. The new building will host small events. In the, in the fair weather, there could be a wedding and some kind of a small gathering in the building, but it's not going to be a second wedding. It's not going to be a big blowout event. It's going to be a historical lecturer, a speaker, maybe a, a small uh, gathering of the Chamber of Commerce or something like that. But, um, and typically, the, those smaller events right now, the parking is what's available on the street and at the municipal lot. Um, they have roped off the driveway on the south so that nobody can park off to the shoulders. And that's now shown on Tom's plans. Uh, the parking policy will firmly describe that for the benefit primarily of, their, of, of the society and some of the elderly members of, of the group that attend meetings in the facility. So they will either park on the street, park at, across the street, or park in the far back. But they will no longer park on the high value archaeological site. Um, some of the uh, directional traffic issues Tom will cover, but we will have posting of signs for one-way traffic in on the south and out on the north. Um, so that kind of summarizes where Charles sees his operation, um, that we don't believe we're creating a new enhanced nuisance for the neighborhood, that yes, there will be on occasion an event in the barn <laughs> and something in the building, but um, the scale of each will vary by what's available for space and for parking. And we think the new facility will fit well into the, to the neighborhood. So uh, I'll let Tom run through the specifics of our staff meeting and what that led to in changes to the design. Um, on the, uh, the 25th, uh, Mike, myself, Chuck Eaton, Charles Lyle, 
Charbra and uh, for your several staff members. Yeah. Building inspector, fire marshal, town engineer, town planner, and um, the wetlands officer, I believe. Yeah. We had a table um, and in that, we went over previous comments and uh, the new comments. Um, and we've addressed those in the uh, resubmitted plans here. First, with regard to the fire marshal, I went out with a 17 foot tall stick, walked the driveway, and it flagged all the trees that need to be trimmed or limbed back so that they can maintain access. And that includes uh, street trees going all the way around these shaded areas. Um, and that's going to be done by the museum. That's not going to be part of the project itself. Uh, we highlighted that. The other was, uh, with the fire marshal, was parking signs, fire lane signs. And what we agreed to is that we would have a sign at both entrances saying entrance in. We've got that the rope along the driveway. And then back here in two or three different locations, we'll have fire lane, no parking signs as you're driving into the barn. And then on the back side, uh, we're gonna have do not enter because we wanna have the vehicles exit this way. The one caveat with that is buses and trucks. This is too narrow in here for buses and trucks to exit. So they'll enter in here, come back, and have to come back out this way. Um, it's just the nature of, of the site uh, for the- it, It'll be signed that way, you know, one way? Yes. Okay. And it's, again, it's, it's roped off to where now? The uh, so end of the red line there? Basically to where the dumpster is. So okay. from So it the goes beyond the red zone, I'll call it there. Huh? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And at the end of the project, there'll be an opening here for this walkway, but not sufficient for the vehicles to park in there. Right now, it's two to three feet off the, uh, the driveway which is pretty comfortable walking and driving. I wouldn't want to approach too much closer to the driveway. Then so people can leave, leave a handicapped person off there, for example. They can walk up the walkway and then go park, right? Yes, but we also have that taken into consideration as part of our staff meeting. What we agreed to was to take away one of the parking spots on the street and make that a no parking drop off and okay. at the end right. of the new walkway to drop that down to the pavement, have a curb cut. And so you drop, park here, drop off, pick up, exit and enter, and then drive away. <coughs> park or park over here. Thank you. Um, and that was something we had talked about last March. Didn't think it would go anywhere, so we backed off on that with just the walkway going to the top of the curb. But as the parking uh, goes to the surface, that was a, a good suggestion. And that'll be signed as well um, and striped. So, some of the other issues that uh, we just addressed on the plans is we've added dimensions to the addition, <coughs> have removed the Southern curb cut here, replaced, uh, put in a new curb, take out the asphalt apron, and added soil and grass uh, for this area. Reset the bricks in the sidewalks at both driveways, as well as confirm the depth of the material uh, to make those more sturdy as time goes on so they won't fail in the future. But the idea is there, we're gonna pull out the pavers, address the base, put the pavers right back in. So it'll be the same pattern, same pavers as uh, we have there right now. Um, as we've mentioned, this is gonna be enter in, drive around, and enter out. <coughs> Again, except for the uh, buses and the trucks. And, and that'll be signed, there'll be another sign um, here uh, directing people in for uh, the weddings in the back. And the other thing that was in that letter that Mike did say is, for weddings, the grounds are usually have staff on it to help guide and direct people. So it's not park wherever. It's getting back. So you won't need position. signs then? I'm sorry? You won't need signs to direct them then? Oh, only during the event. You won't need as many. We've been asked to put in signs. I know you were. Uh, 
With regard to the signs, we're going to work with staff on that. Charles Lyle right now is down in Colonial Williamsburg and, and heading to other historic sites down there. And I've asked him to take photographs to see what those sites are using for signs. And then we'll work with staff to come up with something that's Good. aesthetically appropriate and yet still meets the request of fire and planning. Come on, I want a big DOT STC approved sign. And <laughs> reflective yellow with the like corners. Yeah. Yeah. Chevrons. Um, another request was to ash the zone boundary line running through the site. We've got the village business district on this side, and on that side is the uh, single family residential, the B zone. Excuse me, may I ask a question at this point? Can you speak up? I'm definitely. May I ask a question at this yes. point? Um, been bothering me on this situation. You never asked uh, for a zone change for the barn, did you? It's very close to the zone line, isn't it? The B zone. We have not. Why? As I was understood and have been told since being involved with the project, it's been a hundred year activity and it's grandfathered. What? what oh. yeah, the, the barn is. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's what's, that's the position of the town. Yeah, I, I I have researched it. You know, it goes back oh, yeah. historically. Sure. So um, it is as we consider it a pre-existing non-conforming activity. And yet, it may be evolving significantly. I mean, you, you know, in the theory of zoning, you can intensify, you know, a use over time. Yeah without having a lot of say over it. So um, probably, fall, expand it. Right, probably falls into that category. You can't physically <coughs> expand it, Rich, but you can. But the activity levels intensify. can intensify, yeah. which is what's use. happened here. Intensify you. Yep. OK, thank you. Yeah. To elaborate on that issue, uh, <coughs> the barn being over 100 years old, that predates uh, zoning regulations within the town of Wethersfield. And and okay. as a consequence, Sorry, it is it is the uh, grandfather George. George. <laughs> George, you have You'd have to ask George. 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 So, so, so Tom, I do note that uh, Derek had another laundry list of comments that probably took place after that meeting on September 26th. Okay, it, it, they don't look they don't look uh, problematic. I think they, were more civil. <laughs> they are, and that was our last point that Chuck Eaton and Derek um, had subsequent phone calls. That email from Derek was a follow up to our larger meeting on twenty fifth. The current plans that you have, or I turned over today, incorporate everything. Okay, uh, with the exception of the interpretation of. Our, our site drainage issue. You know, our uh, groundwater and roof water are going out through a pipe towards the dumpster area, and there's a structure under the driveway the, for the hydrodynamic separation or whatever the civil action is there. So Derek was concerned that if someone pulls off the driveway and drives across the lawn, they go across a pipe, which has less than two feet of cover, but there's really no shoulder at that point. The driveway has the fenced enclosure for the dumpster immediately to the south edge and the large berm with it's all planted up to screen the dumpster area from the weddings uh, on, on the north side. So there's really no chance a vehicle could get off the driveway at that one, one point. So you're basically driving across H20 rated structures 
that are a foot or so below grade. So um, I think Derek was looking with for some guardrails or something, and then when we really looked at it, we said there's really nowhere for a vehicle to stray off the driveway at that one point. So we don't think the pipe's in any danger. Okay. You know, if so. this doesn't become an issue, that may be a great spot for one of my signs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> on both, on one side of the yeah. Nice, yeah. Nicely done. Because yeah. I don't want to put a guardrail. I don't no. want to put a Yeah, I'm sure you can find something small and, you know, appropriate. And believe me, I looked at it, too, from the dumpster guy's perspective to make sure that that truck isn't having to pull into the enclosure to pick up uh, the dumpster, and he's, he's not going to stray either. And the, I don't have the drawing overlaid here, but the truck would not cross the pipe unguarded either. <laughs> Um, okay. I don't remember if it's east or west of the structure, but it looked to me like that they're not going to have a broken pipe because of a dumpster truck, uh, whatever you call it, a trash truck. Right. So I think we're in the clear there. Uh, other questions for the applicant? Yeah, just one quick one. Somewhere in here I read, and that's what I guess we're getting too much information sometimes. Uh, there's a tree in the construction road from the fire station parking lot that you're going around? Yes. You can't, you're not taking it out. It's Correct. Here. Correct. There's a very large white pine. White pine I think it's a 30-inch caliber. So tomorrow we're going to limb about five or six horizontal limbs this big at the bottom west side of that tree. So you can get by. So that um, the archaeologist is bringing in a small tractor to scrape the topsoil, and then this month they're going to be doing their hands and knees, uh, you know, going through the through the site. Um, that should be enough. Every time you do something, you're going to have an archaeologist, right? Sort of. Yeah. You're I ringing know. the bell. I'm tired of hearing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're at 100000 plus already in archaeology fees. And I know you've been through it, it many it, times. Yeah. First of all, as a flat of two weeks ago, it's a wonderful project. It's great mm -hmm. for the town. I'm very happy. The one thing that I was concerned about, I'm glad you made amends with the fire marshal. I think that's important. But one thing that I noticed hasn't changed is the, the light. I've been frequently at the barn for events throughout the years, and it's dark. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're walking from the barn out towards Main Street. It's dark. Mm -hmm. And it's a concern I have, and I, I don't want to turn it over to you. I mean, it, the, that's, that's the one problem that I have is mm -hmm. I'm concerned about, I understand that you want it to go out there and you want it to be, it's in the 1700s. I do too, except I just sense there's a danger there that we're proving mm -hmm. something without any additional lighting. I don't know. Let me tell you what we offered and I'll, then Peter can speak. Um, we initially at the meeting said we'll put some lights up in the trees and some kind of a landscape lighting treatment that Tom has done before. But we also indicated that with the new building out there, it's all glass on the western side and the northern side. So as long as the lights are on in the building, that light is going to spill all over the lawn and towards the barn. From going really at zero foot candles to five to ten foot candles of light level coming out of the building. That may be. But mm -hmm. it still bothers me, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of looking at staff here. I don't want to get us into a bind, quite frankly, that... Uh, I agree with you, Dan, on some your point. Get hurt and uh, we've approved these plans. Do it after the fact. So I had, um, when we get to it, I had a condition uh, suggested for you. Uh, Charles Lyle, who isn't here, also indicated at our meeting that he was planning on putting some lighting. Um, at the bar. Uh, well, in the barn area, there's a storage building in the back there that he was going to come up with a plan to illuminate the parking area. Um, I think we'll have further conversations with him about whether the building, you know, at, it, lighting is adequate or, or maybe he'll start to think further about that. But we can suggest a condition that, you know, a final lighting plan um, be provided uh, to the town for, for final review and approval. So, yeah, that's not the same. I, and we're. Mm -hmm. It's important for the town. We're amenable to to the right kind of lighting. <laughs> photo photo electric. Photo electric doesn't work. It's candles. The little little tiny things along the side of the room. Um, question for uh, Peter. 
Um, in your memo of, um, of what, let's see. September 12th? Uh, no, September, oh, strike, strike that. In the Downs Construction uh, Company memo dated September 17th, uh, they state that the posting of fire lanes is not desired by the museum on this National Historic Landmark property. This is on, I think, uh, page two mm -hmm. of uh, that memo. And then on the October uh, uh, memorandum from the fire marshal, October 2nd, uh, it says that this office will work with the landscape architect to place the appropriate amount of signs for fire lanes. Um, combining th those two statements, I tend to interpret that to mean that, that they, and, and also from what the applicant has just testified to, uh, that the issue regarding you know fire lanes and access of fire vehicles onto the property in event uh, in event of an emergency, that that has been basically resolved between the parties, but subject to uh, item number two in the fire marshal's report, which states that the Developers agreed to trim and remove overhang vegetation that may interfere with fire department access to the rear of the property, and that, um, and, and as well as uh, uh, combining that into uh, item number one of the fire marshal's statement, uh, that this office will work with the landscape ar architect relating to signs for the fire lanes, that that's pretty much resolved, other than. The details will be worked out between you know the the, the and the fire administrative marshal. authority and the applicant. And the fire marshal was willing to compromise on you know the conventional fire lane signs to make sure it's uh, historically uh, sensitive. So uh, I, as a, I, that's okay. another condition, and I would suggest that those final details be uh, worked out. Okay, and that the fire marshal uh, has appeared to agree to the the statement. Uh, that's in the, um, uh, let's see, the um, uh, Downs Construction Company memo of September 17, uh, which states that the posting of fire lanes is not desired by the museum, um, and the fire marshal appears to agree with that statement, or uh, has agreed to uh, work with uh, them on that a, final uh, detail. To accord, in accord with that statement. Yes. Okay. We show those number of those signs on Tom's plan. We're going to bid that scope of work, and then Anthony can walk the site with Tom, and they can decide where to put them. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying mm -hmm. to make sure, for the record, that mm -hmm. uh, the, the you know the, that the town mm -hmm. and the, the town and town staff, as, as well as you, the applicant, mm -hmm. uh, have reached an accord regarding mm -hmm. uh, the basic policy. Uh, uh, regarding that mm -hmm. issue we would agree with that okay this is a public hearing is there anybody who wishes to speak on this topic All right. Peter would you like to go over your list of recommendations regarding sure uh, at this list uh, contains seven seven suggested conditions the first being that a copy of the Webb Dean Stevens parking policy and practices is provided uh, to the town for our review um, I, it was was discussed in the record. I have not seen that, so uh, that should be condition number one. Uh, condition number two pertains to the fire marshal's two uh, concerns that uh, uh, the final details of uh, fire lane uh, signage and location, uh, as well as the limits of tree clearing, be reviewed and approved to his satisfaction. Number three, because uh, there were various staff comments that the final plans are revised to the satisfaction of uh, town staff per the uh, memos and also the Downs Group's response. Number four, that uh, the final details of the directional uh, parking signs that were mentioned um, be submitted to and reviewed by town staff, given uh, also the sensitivity of the historic integrity of the property. So we'll keep that in mind as those plans are submitted. Number five, um, that uh, the various landscape waivers are approved. Uh, Due to the existing landscaping and the proposed uh, existing gardens, woodlands, and landscape beds that exist on the property today and are proposed in the plan. Number six, that a lighting plan 
uh, be submitted to uh, town staff indicating final details. Um, and then lastly, that the, and I, the plan's probably already revised to this extent, but the uh, proposed handicap drop off on Main Street uh, be um, appropriately illustrated in the final set of drawings. So those were the seven conditions, which I think address uh, most of the comments that we've had back and forth here. Right. So we, we did hear uh, that the parking computations have been revised. Is there, is there any particular need to dig into that? No, I think it was just for the record that the final calculations, they are um, as part of the application. If you look at the description of the application, they are uh, requesting a reduction uh, in the uh, required parking, uh, which is uh, permitted per section 6.D5 of your uh, regulations in the village business district zone. I, th those final calculations just need to be incorporated as one of the other revisions to the site plan set. Okay. Anybody have comments about those? Again, it is a public hearing, so we could move on that if you're ready. Any additional questions for the applicant? Move to close the hearing. So before we do, Second. let me just let me before we do, uh, uh, let me just ask: Did you you just heard the conditions that we're going to be considering? Any of those create any agenda for you? I have a question. The, uh, or a statement, question. The handicap drop off is already in the plans. I don't think Derek has seen the latest submission from the city, so I'm sorry we had that on there. Yeah, I had Would that. that yeah, I think yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. I think we kind of recognize that, right? Nobody's seen it, so it's just kind of we'll look at it and approve it. Fair enough. I'm not sure what the lighting plan would would, would comprise. Uh, if it's a photometric study, we could probably generate something there. But Peter, I, I wasn't envisioning a photometric study. I think we just um, we want to condition that maybe Charles had indicated that he was mm -hmm. willing to put some lighting in. Uh, obviously. Uh, you guys indicated that the existing buildings might provide mm -hmm. adequate lighting. I think it's a it's a condition that we'll have a conversation and then maybe even you know mm -hmm. at some point down the road mm -hmm. maybe review that and see if there's other things that might need to be sure. uh, provided. So I I haven't walked out there at nighttime. I don't disagree that it's probably very dark and you do get people walking around back there. So I you know it gives everyone time to think about. It is. What we can come that, up with that's down the road. We would almost want to do at the very end. Once that's what I'm saying. In. Like right. You don't even want to exactly. Phase that in until, mm -hmm. Right. I just want a condition in there that we can continue to review that. So that's. I think that's our what we have in mind. the response we've indicated is the building is going to have the lighting at the exit points that's shown, and we would look to a landscape response to more lighting, like such as up in the trees or something uh, less right. intrusive. Yeah. We can get one of those construction light things with the generator. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> with a strange light bulb. Yeah. Yeah. But use like colonial gas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. All right. Uh, I think that would be otherwise good. Right. So uh, we have a motion for the hearing. We have a motion and a second, I thought. Yep. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. So the application itself. Make a motion we approve application 1993-18Z with the seven conditions that Peter second. read. And jo George seconded it. Anybody have any comments? I thought they were pretty inclusive. Any reason to consider any change language to those seven? No, I think it, I think it's good. I mean, frankly, the only thing I was really concerned about was addressing the fire marshal's concerns. But um, I think those conditions cover everything that we need to be worried about. Yeah. And we've added the lighting issue that Amber. Yeah, yeah I, I just want to thank the applicant for um, working with the staff to put this together. Yes. Yeah. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Motion passes. Good luck on the project. Thank you, thank you very much. All righty, move on to <clears throat> new business. Item 3.1, a public hearing for application 1995-18-Z. Derek Vincenzo, 
seeking a special permit in accordance with section 36 to install an oversized shed. Thank you for waiting. How you doing? <laughs> I'm Derek Vincenzo. I live at 57 Valley Crest Drive, and I'm looking to put in a storage shed to store my kids' toys, my <laughs> lawn furniture, and my lawnmower. <clears throat> so, so is this where we ask you 100 questions, keep you for a half an hour so that you can feel like you were okay. needed? <laughs> <laughs> it's a big building. Can I talk? Yeah. Yes, George. Okay. Uh, I went out there and saw his site, and I even talked to him. Now, I know you're not supposed to exactly do that, but <laughs> I was telling him, finding out what it looks like out there, what he's doing, and so forth. And um, so I felt satisfied, and I'll comment after. Are you going to say anything more about all things? So, so, so could you? You ought to describe your site and where so, you're putting it. Oh, it's going to. I guess if you pulled in my driveway, it's going to be to the left left of my house. I'll set in the back where there was an old shed. I already removed the old shed. Same spot. Is it even Could, possible to get a 200 square foot shed that holds anything? So that's like, so, is, so the is, only, is, only thing I'd like you to comment. Is something that, that it's what, it's old? Happens? It happens all the time. Right. You, just, you just don't see it, right? You just don't ever see so, it. Right. So the, qu the question I'm going to ask you is, why do you need something bigger than 200? So I can fit more stuff from my house in it. No, you got how many kids you got? Three. <laughs> That's a do lot of a, stuff. Do you have a nice big riding lawnmower you need to fit in there? I got a walk mine. I got to fit in there. <laughs> but you, you have your a fence. Yeah, I got a fence, too, all in front of it. And it's blocked in by all trees. You can't even see trees, it, really. Trees, very high shrubs. Are, they're, they're like 30 feet. These lights yeah. Are so the back. shrouded back there. So you're not, the neighbors aren't affected, really. So, you, so your neighbors won't see it? Yeah, you can't see it, now. Any questions for the applicant? No comments from the public. We didn't get a single phone call, so I'm assuming... Therefore, that none of the neighbors have any uh, any objections to this. Thank you, they, Mr. Chairman. They had to come out and let me look in there. I mean, it's so so shrouded. Fencing, and then the shrouding on on both sides, back and side. It it's almost secluded. On a, on a did you knock on the door, George? Did, George, did you knock on the door? Did they have to, you know, chase you know, out of the backyard? They came out. His father came out after me. And <laughs> yes. knocked. Yeah, the door good. was open. They right. made me show my, I never had this, but they made me show my ID. Oh, so would I. I said, that's so crazy. I can't believe you did that. that. You show them your <laughs> <laughs> you show them your planning and zoning badge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just flash it real quick. I can't see them today. So, so is there anybody... <laughs> Is there anybody from the public who wishes to comment on this application? All right, seeing no, seeing no one. Uh, thank you. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. On the application itself? Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. This is application 1995-18-Z. Uh, who seconded? Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. We could have held you longer. Oh, that's right. Good luck. We'll get you Good next luck. time. All right, thanks. So is this on purpose? Item item three point two, a public hearing, application nineteen ninety eight dash eighteen dash Z, another Vincenzo? Onochi? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's <part of> the <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself from this application. Thank you. Uh, my name so is Vincent Lenocci. I'm from 285-287 uh, oh. Main Street. We're in the process of uh, opening up a restaurant. And uh, I'll have my daughter-in-law. She speaks better than me. She's going <laughs> to explain to you what we're going to do. <laughs> All right. Go Hi, everybody. I'm Larissa Lenocci. <laughs> 
and we're seeking a special permit to operate a restaurant at 285 to 287 Main Street. Um, we're looking to do seasonal outdoor seating, um, <coughs> indoor seating of approximately 12 to 16 seats, and a parking reduction. We will not be offering table service. Um, our goal is to kind of keep the guests coming in and out, mm -hmm. sort of like a quick service. We'll construct a one unisex handicap bathroom, as well as handicap accessibility into the restaurant by the side entrance as shown in the packet. I think we just passed around that picture. Um, we propose to regravel the existing back lot to accommodate one to two more spaces, specifically for my father-in-law um, and one employee. We propose to work with the town financially to increase the on-street parking as suggested by the town officials during our preliminary um, on-site meeting. Um, per our measurement today, we anticipate there could be about four to five spaces um, on the street created. <clears throat> we would suggest maybe that a handicapped space be allocated using one of the existing spaces that's close to the current sidewalk. Currently, there's about four to five nearby businesses, and there's not, to my knowledge, one handicap space allocated. Um, so we would suggest maybe doing something uh, so that we can have that. Um, and overall, we look forward to improving the property and giving some really good food to the community. Whoops. Bye -bye. <laughs> there goes the picture. So... Um, you, you said financially assist yes. the town? Yes, so we will... We're, planning on paying for that on-street parking to be taken care of. Oh, you mean like restriping, pay for to have it restriped? So right now, um, if you're looking at the property in front of you to the right-hand side, there is the potential for four to five uh, parking spaces to be dug out. Um, it stops right where uh, my father-in-law's property ends, but then there is more town, I believe that's town-owned space, in front of the residential home. In front of 297? Yes. yes. And uh, we had all spoken about doing something like this um, at our preliminary on-site meeting, and uh, we're willing to pay for that to get taken care of. The neighbor thinks it's all right? We have not spoke. We, we, spoke yeah, today. we figured we would talk to you guys first and then um, approach the neighbor respectfully. And why don't you want to do it behind the building where the it's, gravel is now? Speaking from experience, we, uh, my husband and I, we put in a $75,000 parking lot behind my salon at 287 Main Street. And at this time, uh, feasibly, we can't do that behind the current space. Budget. Yeah, we don't have the, yeah. yeah, we don't have the funds to, to do that because it would involve drainage and all of that stuff. And right now there's an existing gravel lot. In the future, we'll do it. Yes. How, however, it's not a marked out lot. How would you designate spaces? It's it's been operating since we purchased. Well, yeah. We have three apartments, and we told everybody we just. Yep. Everyone. Yeah, there's never apartment. been an issue, nor has any of the tenants complained about it. But if you want, we can put signs there for A, B, and C. And yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm just wondering what the neighbor will think when they <coughs> dig out those spots. It is town property, but I wonder if there's any legal right that they have mm -hmm. to the property that's out there. So uh, I'm going to suggest that you know every commission, uh, every commissioner up here, just kind of think about the idea. Of, are they okay if those lots, if those four more spots don't go in? Just kind of keep that in mind. I, I wouldn't be overly happy if my curb line were to be removed and they were suddenly parking in front of it personally um, and I don't know if they have some if they have some right to not have it there it's interesting that you know the property 280 277 283 285 287 it's only those commercial use mm -hmm. commercially used properties that have those parking spots there and it makes me wonder whether prior owners I'm sure you know you guys haven't owned it that long but yeah. Some prior owners built those, right? Because that's their frontage. I oh, know the town built all that on street really? parking many years they ago. They full up today when I was out there. Oh, they, they get they get very in, they get pretty it's heavily used. Yeah. yeah, wouldn't be surprised. Probably long term. So, so what do you what do you think? You think we the town could just go ahead and build more spots um, in front of them? The town wouldn't do it without having a meeting and discussing it with the entire um, street. So 
Uh, it was suggested by town staff that there's an opportunity to expand uh, the parking, given the um, you know situation out there. Um, it has not been officially discussed or reviewed by uh, anyone yet. Um, so we're pleased to hear that the applicants are willing to take on the financial part of it, but there would be the there would be a process we would have to go through just because you guys. I, I think it's it's. It's helpful to hear from you guys what you think uh, um, before we start going down that uh, particular road. In other words, they want to put it on the street above them, sort of. Yep. As the next neighbor. Yep. And instead of out back where they now have a gravel lot. So um, related to that, we just received a grant from this Connecticut DOT of all people to um, wow. improve a bunch of intersections throughout. Uh, old Weathersfield, this being one of the intersections. Um, so potentially the work could be, you know, done under that particular Including project. A stop sign at well, that's, the that's what we got the money for. So, um, so it could be done under that project. Um, that probably wouldn't happen until uh, next year sometime after we go through a public review process. But um, so that's kind of what we were thinking, that we would look at this entire area up there and see how we could fine tune it and try and add some parking at the same time. I thought you were interested in maybe parking in the back and that's why I'm surprised to hear Well, I, the applicant is proposing some parking in the back and you saw my comment in the memo um, <clears throat> that we need to look at that a little, little more comprehensively. Um, there is room uh, and there's probably more a more efficient way to park back there so that uh, if people are parking behind the restaurant people who might be in the apartments when I was out there last week there were two or three cars in the parking lot so um, during the day mm -hmm. so um, I think that needs to be thought out a little bit a little bit further I'm not suggesting that you know a parking lot similar to what was done down the street <coughs> for their other property uh, but something you know clearly delineated um, so that it's useful for everybody during the day and at nighttime so the applicant had, had indicated it was it was or he was willing to um, uh, post you know signs mm -hmm. you yes. know, for that purpose mm -hmm. would you find that to be an acceptable way of delineating I this? don't think on its own it is but it could be part of a solution yeah okay otherwise you'll have cars parking behind each other and you know having people having to move and that kind of thing which I think might have might have been a problem in the past with the previous tenant so <coughs> Um, so you think something in addition to some the signage, signage would be yeah. required? Yeah, it's it's gravel, so you know, gravel parking lots without any delineation can sometimes. Well, you so if we had a condition, if we had a condition, uh, would would it be acceptable to f sort of phrase the condition uh, that uh, you know the that they will make improvements for uh, you know that that back parking area. And that subject to uh, requirements that the town staff will f will impose or find to be required. Work we would work of, with the applicant safety on that, right? And, and uh, uh, public convenience. Okay. It's very uh, interesting, though, that we're proposing uh, parking on a public no. land uh, for a private owner. Uh, and the private owner is going to pay for the the <coughs> parking. I mean, well, I think you, I think you heard an offer. Me, but that's wrong. <coughs> well, Peter just Peter just said the town paid for all that parking, which right. you know, news to me. Obviously, yeah. I haven't been around that long either. Yep. Yeah. Um, I I still I still think you probably ought to consider this application without the without the guarantee that those four spots would ever come. Yeah. Or, additional could, spots would come could we address that issue by uh, instead of imposing a That's condition uh, that we reference our uh, uh, the Commission's recommendation that the town accept uh, a grant of funds from the applicant for purposes of, uh, of, of paying for all or a portion of that that additional parking it's kind of a vague yeah I guess I'd rather no, just leave it's, it. it's very vague it's un, it's but unenforceable. It, I hate to adopt something which is not enforceable, and that's that's so vague that how do you enforce it? Yeah, well, it wouldn't be enforceable. That's that's the point. Well, but at least it'd be referenced 
So as an, I'm not as sure an issue what the that we address. Referencing something if you can't enforce it. That's just my. Speak to those. Sure. So, so besides the parking, um, Peter had some other comments to put his arms around the whole package, right? So, and what are you looking for? So, what are you? Fair. Yeah. So, uh, so, the prior business that uh, was there was a restaurant um, that occupied half of the the, the space itself, and uh, he had uh, four tables that sat four people per table. So, he had already a seating for 16 people. Um, what we propose to do is keep it seasonal. I mean, it's obviously not going to be year round. And then uh, if we, we would like to be able to mirror that same pl plan on the other side. Um, so together, it'd be 32 um, uh, seats. But we're willing to decrease that if that's something that you know the staff suggests. We're open to, to doing so. Because again, it's not supposed to be, uh, it's not table seating. It's no different than how Creamery has some seating outside, Bistro has some seating outside. It's, we just kind of want to have that same feel on that end of the street. No live music. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And, and you so, said you'd be redoing the um, yes. brick. Yes. Yep. Out yep. Front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything. Sure it's it's even and exactly. Good and, uh, Beautiful. And mm -hmm. the access into the Correct. building is good. And yeah, the entire How many building. How seats do you want to put out there on tables? So ideally, we'd like to have four on on either side of the entranceway. Um, that would be great, and then there would be four seats per table. Um, that's. You can fit them in there. Four. And yep, four. John. John from Cove Deli had four tables and had four seats per table, and he operated that's there for years. Go three yeah, we could go for three. Yeah. Again, it's not, you know, the seating is just as a courtesy for the patrons. Will any of the tables be accessible to people with disabilities? And what are your, your arrangements for uh, access by people with disabilities? So currently the, um, the pavers that meet the sidewalk are, are level. There's a slight incline. Um, and that is, you know, what's pre-existing. So what we propose is we're going to tear all that up and make it nice one flat uh, space on either side of the entranceway. And then uh, to the left will be uh, there's a currently there's a, a cement um, concrete yeah. pad, and that's going to meet the pavers that go into the side entrance for that's specifically made for the handicap accessibility. So okay. Would you then would you then accede to a a condition that uh, those improvements will conform to uh, the American uh, Americans for Disabilities, the ADA, Americans with Disabilities mm -hmm. Act, as well as uh, uh, Section 504, the Rehab Rehabilitation Act of 1973. Yeah, our hope is to abide by all regulations regarding ADA. We are going to have a, a handicap accessible bathroom in there. There's currently not one in there, and the pre-existing restaurant that was there didn't have a, a bathroom even for patrons. So we are putting in a uh, unisex handicap bathroom in there as well. So you'll have accessibility, outdoor seating uh, for someone that has disability, an entrance inside, and then there will be um, obviously a table for, for someone to sit inside if they wish to. Uh, question, Peter. With regards to the outside seating, uh, has that proposal been reviewed by both the, you know, the building official and uh, the fire marshal for purposes of, access, you know, of, of dealing with issues of uh, public ass access and uh, and uh, life safety? Not yet. Um, so the plans are not at the level of detail where they would be able to actually say that. So you saw in my comments that there's a level of detail that's uh, additionally required at this point in order to get to that uh, phase. So there is a, a conceptual plan, I would call it, that shows uh, the willingness to provide handicapped accessibility, but the details of that have to be provided so that they can be sure that it does in fact meet those codes. Okay. Well, handicap access accessibility is, is one one factor. The other factors are, are you know just basic public safety and public access <coughs> into uh, into and out of uh, the building and out of the site. Correct. So, thank you for that segue, Peter. Can we go back to your memo? You had some basic four items, right? And uh, 
tell me, you know, as you list those four items, are you satisfied with those based on new information since the date of your memo? So as, as this conversation is evolving, I'm hearing some things for the first time. So, um, so I think this maybe needs to end up being like a, a sort of a two-step motion from you guys. So there are a couple things that I think you need to discuss whether um, you feel that they are recommended. So those two things are whether you think it's important to have a handicapped accessible parking stall on Main Street to service those businesses up in the, on that end of Main Street. There isn't any now. And then secondly, whether you think it's a good idea for this applicant to work with this with the town to add additional on-street parking up there uh, at, at their expense. So that's probably more of a recommendation or something we should discuss. And then secondly, I think um, the rest of my comments pertain to the need for additional detail, additional detail so that we can uh, make sure the parking in the rear is going to work for everybody, the apartment building as well as this business. Secondly, uh, providing details of exactly uh, how many tables are going to be out there, what the pavers are going to consist of, uh, those kinds of things. Um, the details of the handicapped, handicapped accessibility into the building. Number three, there was, there was uh, an indication that there may be some awnings and lighting. Uh, and some signage on the front of the building. I, I can't tell from the plans uh, as to that level of detail. And then lastly, I think we already covered the rear uh, parking area. So those are the four things that I felt um, needed further um, clarification uh, in, the, in the application. And then your motion obviously should also factor in the fact that they're asking for a parking uh, reduction. Um, <coughs> there is, uh, as George says, uh, that side of Main Street um, does get pretty well used in terms of the parking spaces, particularly around lunchtime. Yeah, where all the people However, the other company. side of the street. They're, they're parking in the lot yeah, across the street. Well, uh, even on street, there's, if you look at the aerial, yeah, you can see there's on street parking, uh, uh, you know, parallel to the curb that a lot of times, at least my observations have been uh, that they are available. The other thing is <clears throat> the church is also across the street. The church mm -hmm. has a pretty large parking lot in the back. Um, it would probably behoove the applicants. I, I, I don't know that this business is going to generate, you know, the need for people to spill over into the church and, and to heart seed or anything like that. But nevertheless, there is um, some additional parking that isn't uh, traditionally used during the midday uh, up on that end of uh, Main Street. So yeah, um, midday, I mean, at night or whatever, when you create, if you create any new spots in front of this location, you're just creating new spots for people who are going to the creamery or going to Griffith or whatever. Like, you're you're all you're doing is creating spots for them, not yeah. for this business. Sure. Yeah. So if people are coming to this restaurant, even if they're coming at night, they're probably not only going to that location. They're going to all the other locations. So everybody's got to share the same pot. Mm. Um, so in my mind, adding those spots just doesn't really make sense it doesn't feel like it would make any difference it would just I don't know get rid of some grass in front of somebody's house so so let's talk about each of the things that Peter described because it, what's going through my mind is I'm comfortable uh, just letting staff work those issues out mm -hmm. right <clears throat> when it comes to the outdoor seating pavers tables etc uh, I'd be perfectly willing to let Peter work that out unless somebody has some concern about the numbers that have been presented, 32 people, eight tables, to the extent that they fit that many. You know, I'd let Peter and staff work that out, right? So, so are you suggesting an act, action tonight on our behalf or to hold off? No, to, to, yeah. to act today and let Peter, you know, and staff do what they need to do, right? Um, the same thing goes with the handicapped accessibility, though Peter's looking for some direction as to whether we think we need to create something in front of this facility specifically, correct? Uh, yeah, I wanted to present that to you. That would require probably us going through some sort of public process to make that change on Main Street, but um, it is interesting there is nothing up you know, there is a there is a handicapped, well, I don't know if it's technically handicapped accessible, but there is a ramp 
that comes from Main Street up to the front entrance that can be used. So the parking space should probably be right there. Um, would you make that a parking space, or would you just hatch it off? And it would be a it would be handicapped. A yeah, space. we'd put a we'd have to put a sign, and we'd have to do the striping accordingly. It the problem with that it may end up losing one space. Right. Yeah, because the ramp goes right yeah. to the middle of the. So, but I think it is. Uh, it is a, an added value for the businesses up there. There should be one there now. And is that something the town would end up going through or would this applicant? Uh, the town would end up doing it. That's kind of what I'm thinking, right? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> the awnings, the lighting, the signage, again, <laughs> something that others would agree. Obviously, <laughs> I think so. Leave it to the staff. Yeah. Right. When we went to HDC, um, we presented that we would be mirroring exactly what's next door at my boutique, which has got the same awning, the same light fixtures. So that's exactly what would be we would be doing. We already spoke with the HDC about that. Thank you. So, so I think you're probably getting, at least from my perspective, that these are minor things. He'll need them for the record. Okay. You'll have to give them to him. Okay. But I'm okay with him taking and care staff of it. taking okay. care of it. And Perfect. I think that's what you're hearing from most of us, right? Perfect. So... So it's talking about is the applicant comfortable with that, you know, that sort of solution to these various issues. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. So, so the handicap parking. Do we should we yes. direct town to to work to try and get a singular handicap space and a ramp right. into those areas? I tend to agree. I can concur. concur yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, especially <laughs> if it ends up eliminating the sidewalk that leads into that mm -hmm. center spot. Because they could be replacing or fixing up the brick on a sidewalk that then the town decides the handicapped spot should be at the first spot and then there's no point in them doing any of that work so just got to make sure we're not asking them to do something that then the town's going to dig up you okay with that mm -hmm. all right so what about the parking numbers the parking reduction um, and <clears throat> their inability to create it in the back um, are we comfortable with that? Uh, you know, personally, I just I can't see parking in the back for the facility and coming off the different road just to access the site. Am I understanding it correctly? Yeah, it comes off of uh, Hartford Avenue. Yeah, now, I'd also have have you know any you know, large number of parking arrangements back there. I'd have concerns about safety yeah. because that that's close to the intersection and. And that street is curved and narrow and, and pretty heavily trafficked. Concern also the um, your tenant, you know, that uh, there's going to be an overlap, especially during noon hour. I don't know when his busy time is, but that's going to be your busy time, mm -hmm. I would assume, is during the lunch hour. Yes. And uh, well, you you've got the over. salon, you know, commercial salon there. Um, it's a concern. Every every parking space we can get. Or even if they were allowed to park back there, uh, uh, I, I, I think that it's, it could be some real congestion over there at certain times of the day. If I might add, um, when I occupied, yeah. I had also a salon at 281 Main Street, and it's now going to be the boutique. Um, I had... A, a good amount of people coming in and out, and then you had Bijou Rose, then you had Cove Deli, and we also occupied 287 as our spa, and we never had an issue with parking when there was full occupancy across the board. Your operation is going to be a little bit bigger than Cove Deli. They just had a couple tables in there. Have you, have you discussed this with Guy, you know, your, your tenant over there? Is, is, yeah. Yeah, we have. Yeah, no, Guy is, yeah, so guy is very... He's cool. Guy wants so he can get yeah. With his and I'm the other tenant. <laughs> I'm the other tenant that business. has the boutique. <laughs> yeah. I think most people are just excited that we're going to be renovating the space and making it a nice, yeah. you know. What are going to be, what are uh, the hours of operation for the restaurant? Currently we're 10 to 6. Closed on Mondays. Closed okay. on Mondays. So every day except Mondays you'll be open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Uh, some of my fellow commissioners, we usually require paved parking in back there uh, for the tenants, for example, wherever we have housing, right? We're not in this case. The out front, you know, the people who park out front overnight. I, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not following your remarks because the out front parking well, is, have, that's all public, public yeah. property, public parking, which is paid. My yeah, understanding right. is that right. there's a, a but gravel space behind the the, the buildings mm -hmm. that which people is now park in. Park now. Right. A couple of them. And that, that is currently not, not paved. And That's so right. you remark you're you're focused on that rear rear yeah, no. parking area. <clears throat> okay. Well, yeah, well I'm not I guess following up on what I said before, I'm not really inclined to make people park back there by making them make the parking lot bigger, paving it, any of that. No, I didn't say make yeah, right? it bigger necessarily. If, if you're going to use this establishment, you're coming from the front up on Main Street. Yeah. Yeah. I think right? it would be a mistake it already to even... Yeah. We've kind of already addressed parking. this or discussed this issue through you know, questioning of, of town planner Peter uh, regarding he's going to work with the applicant to uh, make necessary improvements for purposes of convenience and safety uh, for the you know for uh, the commercial tenants back there that would be parking during you know daylight operations can I say something um, yes. if you put parking on the other side on Hartford Avenue when people come on the west side they don't have no stop sign they just turn mm -hmm. So yeah, have, uh, that, that's why I said uh, that yeah. that area is you know, it's dangerous, it's dangerous yeah. to think about any mass mm -hmm. parking in that in that in that back lot. Mm -hmm. is, is this going to be uh, a stop sign put there by the recommended by DOT? Um, <laughs> DOT has nothing to do DOT with it, do it but no. but we are no, planning to put another stop sign. In. Yes. Good. Okay. Especially with new young drivers going around the block there. Right, mm -hmm. right now, this yeah. is free movement to come. That's what he's saying. People come out of the stone stop. Just darn Griffith kids. Okay. All right. So, um, is there anybody in the public who wishes to speak? Tom? I just want to make one quick comment on the. Uh, I think that's a nice. Why don't you want to sit up there so the director can hear you? Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I think that's a great offer from the applicant to offer to pay for putting some parking spaces on town property, but I think that's really a lousy idea to go, bad road to go down. If I was the homeowner there, I'd be livid that I'm going to lose my, essentially my front lawn that I've been, even though the town owns it, I've been maintaining it for years and years. And also, where do you stop? Do you continue that parking scheme all the way down to the cove, or you know? <laughs> and uh, the second part of that is, uh, if they have to shell out all this money for these parking spaces, I think there's going to be kind of a, hey, those are my parking spaces for my restaurant, not for people using the creamery or whatever else. So I, I think you should try to make this plan work. Uh, without those potential spaces. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So, so, are you guys ready to close the hearing? Do you want anything more from the applicant? Not saying. Motion to close. Thank you. Anybody else ready to? And what's the second that? I'll second it. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Anyone opposed? All right. So let's let's talk about the application itself. Uh, again, I'm of the opinion that you know this can be left to staff, uh, asking the applicant to submit to staff the necessary documents to make them happy. Uh, specific to Peter's comments, if I could find them again, four specific things. Would anybody like to? Try and craft a motion. Since uh, I'll, I'll attempt. Thank you. Um, uh, let's see. <coughs> All right. I move to approve application number one nine nine eight dash eighteen dash Z inclusive of the 
uh, of our accession to the parking reduction uh, re that uh, requested by the applicant, uh, but also subject to the um, conditions or staff comments uh, uh, one through four is contained in uh, the memorandum from the town planner dated September 28, 2018 on uh, page three of that, uh, uh, of that memorandum as well as the additional four conditions that the town planner uh, mentioned uh, uh, at this evening's uh, hearing um, and that um, those items that uh, do remain uh, outstanding or not uh, clearly defined shall be uh, uh, worked out between the town and town staff uh, in accordance with the, uh, uh, the such findings as the town staff may uh, 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 may may impose or come to a conclusion about. Does that uh, make sense to people so far? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, the bottom line is it, it's the four four conditions, four conditions that, that Peter indicated. Um, and I think we could have stopped right at that, right? We're going to, the applicant's going to provide additional details on the outdoor seating, the paving and tables, et cetera. They're going to look into handicap accessibility and see what uh, options they can address there, uh, provide the awnings and lighting and, and signage such. And then, uh, and then the parking stuff in the rear. Peter's looking for direction on that. So are, are you of the opinion, you're the one making the motion, are you of the opinion that we should leave the rear to the rear to negotiation between town staff and the applicant. But no, no specific, no specific desire on your no part. No specific to make requirements, it. because okay. you know I don't think we're in a position really to to uh, you know to gauge how that may come out, and I'm particularly concerned about uh, you know public safety aspects of uh, having uh, bigger and parking better. that 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 rear area, I, at least in any great uh, numbers I tend to agree so just for the record all I'm attempting to do back there is fine-tune and, and accommodate the additional parking that was proposed behind the restaurant that's so, my understanding so we're not talking well. about a whole new parking Correct. scheme back there it's just making sure that it's going to work between the two different buildings as was indicated in the application so I don't want I don't want the expectation to be that they're gonna have a big formal parking lot uh, much different than what's out there now, but it's really going to be a an adjustment and a fine tuning to make sure it all works together. Right, and and basically to accommodate the minimum number of, of vehicles that uh, uh, their, their business requirements, including their tenants, require. Yep. Okay. Right. I, I I like that. That's what I was hoping for as well. Is there a second for that motion? Since I don't think I should. Second. Be. Thank you, Yolanda. <clears throat> Any additional comments? Thoughts on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Yeah. And you're opposed, okay. Uh, and Rich was abstaining, so that's five positives, right? One, two, three, four, no. Uh, yeah, right, six. Dan, Dan, Dan joined after we did the count. Okay, so six positives. All right, thank you, good luck. Thank you. All right. Application number, and this is not a public hearing. Yay. <clears throat> Application number 1999, a very good year, dash 18 dash Z, Cole Vest, Weathersfield LLC, seeking a site plan approval for change of use. Retail to restaurant, 1080. Silas Dean. Is the applicant here? Yeah. You did get closer to me. <laughs> I'm Peter LePoint. Work for the coal dust group. We are the property owner. Uh, we're requesting a change of use for a 2,400 square foot space at 1080 Silestine Highway. 
from retail, it was formerly a cosmetic supply store, to a restaurant use. Uh, the name of the proposed restaurant is Zoop, Z-O-U-P. Uh, the site is appropriately zoned. The proposed use is consistent with the other uses in the plaza and the uses around us. There's adequate parking, handicap parking. Uh, so there's a screen, uh, adequate screen trash enclosure for the tenant as well as the existing tenants, uh, and adequate uh, loading and receiving areas. Uh, the building is, uh, has a fire sprinkler sister system. It's alarmed. Uh, it has an underground grease trap if they need it. I'm hopeful they'll be able to use a Big Dipper automatic grease recovery unit inside, but that's really up to MDC. Uh, the tenant will do their own interior build out, uh, but I think we're going to end up having to bring, there's a 200 amp service in there now, there's an available 400 amp service on the back of the building, so I'm going to have to change that around and give them a 400 amp service. And I, I suspect we're also going to be obligated to give them uh, a new rooftop HVAC <coughs> unit, but other than that, they're going to do their own build out. Uh, they also will apply for their own signage. They get a little space on the freestanding multi-tenant sign out in front, and they have whatever the zoning allows for a wall sign over their storefront. George. Yeah. Um, Peter, what's required parking? You just said it seems to be okay from what you can see and from what I can see, but what actually... Is required. Yeah, I think then, we uh, one other thing we well, recalculated is, uh, that. Make have I want to put a condition in the employees park out back like we have on all your other tenants. Mm -hmm. Remember we asked that. All right. I think it was on. Yeah, the parking Mr. calculation. So uh, George, um, I did ask for the the plans to be revised to reflect uh, all the present uh, tenancies. The, there is a revised plan that came in uh, uh, yesterday that is, um, oh, is should have been in your packet. So it does reflect the uh, accurate zone and the uh, parking calculations to reflect the uh, existing tenancy and there's still excess um, parking there. So there is, um, as, as you can see in my memo, um, there are 183 parking spaces on the site. 126 are located in the front of the site and there's an additional 57 in the back and on the side of uh, CVS. Uh, I've been uh, out there numerous times uh, and recently during lunchtime numerous times and there's plenty of parking. Uh, there, are, there always is in my mind. I'm out not, front and there's I'm not challenging and yeah. I'm just saying uh, yeah. what, what, what are the requirements, yeah. that's all. And they're, they're well met. They're reflected sure. in the revised plan, yep. Okay. So if I'm hearing you right, Peter, you know, your statement um, in your memo of September 27th, um, down near the bottom uh, when it says site plan comments, yep. uh, paragraph three of that section, um, you kind of, I, I, when I read it, it looked like you were recommending a, a condition that would be kind of phrased as, as follows, that the parking, the applicant shall uh, provide a parking table uh, revised to reflect the actual use of the spaces such as retail, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Are you saying that that's, that condition is no longer necessary? That's correct. Because he has revised, included that in his revised that's, plan? That's right. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Right. Any any. Additional comments or questions? And Is there are motion? no no exterior um, improvements um, proposed. The you know property is handicapped accessible, and we recently expanded the parking. If you remember, uh, out there. So um, comments are limited. I make Mr. Chairman, a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that. <coughs> Any oh, wait, wait a minute. We should, oh, yeah. we should uh, move to close the hearing. Possible. Oh, there's no hearing. Oh. That's right. No, um, no, no hearing. And um, uh, I'd like a condition to go with it to park out employees' park out back. I'll second so, that. No. Great. 
<laughs> so we have a motion and a second to Are there approve. enough spaces out back for all the employees of everything to park? <laughs> 57. Oh, this is 16. Have you had any problems that way? Or you really haven't enforced it, probably. Of, of having the employees park out back? So oh, we, parking out back. we make it available and we ask them to so that frees up the parking in front for the customers. Right. That's the idea, yeah. All right, so we have we have a, a motion to approve 1999-18-Z uh, with a singular condition to have the uh, tenants park in the back and we have a second. Is there anybody who has any additional comments on that? Otherwise, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Excellent. Very Thanks good. for waiting. What happened to Chipotle? Excuse me? What happened to Chipotle? Uh, Chipotle's oh. still there. Yeah. And they're doing oh, okay. well. Yeah, this is the uh, cosmetic, old cosmetic. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Cos this the last space. The the closest to CVS. Right. Yeah, okay. Thank yeah, you. my burritos are still there, buddy. <laughs> Thank you for bringing more restaurants into town. <laughs> well, my staff wants this one up in Springfield, too. They, they were reading the menu online. <laughs> Bring back pizza. Thank you. <laughs> pizza. <laughs> and and you're, you're, you're a great landlord. I mean, I think things are looking good down there, and uh, everything seems to be positive. I hope you hold your tenants. It's, it's a tough strip, strip malls now. Thank you. Okay, good luck. All right, so we have uh, some minutes in this package. I already threw them away. Move. Skip the meeting dates. You want us to do that? I just want to make sure anyone, if anyone has any problems with any of the dates that we've laid out, we still have time to <clears throat> amend Thank it if you, need Peter, be. That's the first time I've gotten a list like that in a long time that's all elaborate with all the other commissions and stuff. You like that, George? I appreciated it a lot. Okay. I haven't confusing. seen them one for 15 years. <laughs> So there are one, good. two. It's like European style, though. Three, really three, work. three Wednesday meetings. Um, so uh, one in January, one in February, and one in September. I'm, I'm assuming you'll tell me the next, the date of each meeting when we sit here. We always do. So. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> Do we have to approve that or no? No, just in case there were any revisions you wanted. All right. So the minutes, uh, I don't have them in front of me. Motion to approve the September 18th minutes. I'll accept Second. that. Okay. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Do we have enough people here who were there? I don't have it in yeah. front of me. We do. Okay. All right. What else? Staff reports. Uh, just, I gave you a flyer. We're having a, a bike and walk open house at the Pitkin Community Center on October 30th in the evening. So if any of you are interested in con participating in that, please uh, join us uh, that night. You have a couple of applications coming up, uh, the sign uh, regulation amendments, and then there is a home occupation uh, at 189 Beverly Road. Do you need New representation on the bike ped planning committee. We did lose our uh, designee, um, Mr. Margiata. So if anyone else wants, George has been um, dutifully uh, attending the meetings. If anyone else wants to be added to the list, I will be more than happy to do that. Remember, this is sort of going to be part of the comprehensive plan of development without it being approved that way. But that's what the Peter is going for, and he's doing a great job down there with it. Uh, and this is a key meeting for people to comment, and like we did with our comprehensive planning in the past. And uh, I wish, I wish this committee luck, and I hope the results come out okay. Because I still mention sidewalks on my street every year here. And I, I don't know, and I, they mark them up, but I don't get the sidewalks completed. But hey, there, there, there's got to be money to go into this stuff. To, we yeah. up with it is. So, so if anybody um, wishes to uh, volunteer to to be the official representative from this committee, I'll ask you to you know reach out to Peter. Okay. And the mayor attended our last meeting, didn't she? Three uh, town councilors were at your last meeting. Yeah, they were. Yeah. That's good. Anything else? That's it. All right. Can I have a motion to? Uh, 
Adjourn. So moved. Second. Hey, thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Just because. <clears throat>